What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about <gasps> Bing, The Unholy Consult by R. Scott Baker. Guys, this is the fourth and final book in the Aspect Emperor series. And I know you're already trying to click away on that keyboard, but please don't go anywhere because these reviews are designed for you guys to get as much information without spoiling anything so you can make the decision is this a series that's worth jumping in for you? Because I do think it's very dense and intimidating, and it's, you know, several books long. So it might be more than what you're willing to get into, but I also don't want people to be so intimidated of this stuff like I was. So here I am trying to clear things up as best as I can without spoiling them. Let's get into it. The Unholy Consult picks up right after the events of the Great Ordeal, and this is going to be that last leg of the journey. Essentially, all of our threads are going to converge on Golgotaroth. And this is, you know, this is the end of the world, guys. This is where the human race shows up and fights to see who's standing at the end of it all. One of the first things I want to get into is the pacing of the book. Because for me, this is the fastest paced Baker book, and that's not surprising. I thought that The Thousandfold Thought was a very fast paced book as well. And so I think that's just kind of the fashion in which Baker likes to end his series. You know, these final books are really everything coming at you all at once. And a lot of people might think that it feels rushed. And just like in a thousandfold thought review, I'm just going to go ahead and argue that it doesn't feel rushed. It just feels like a lot coming at you all at once. Now, also, I said, personally, for me, this was a very fast paced book. The, the Great Ordeal and the Unholy Consult were some of the most intense reads for me. So I was very, you know, just engaged and enthralled with everything that was going on, you know, whether it was heavy or not or heartbreaking or not. And it just, you know, it kept me going and devouring this stuff at a rapid pace. But I do want to admit, because not just not just his writing, but also the content, the tone, the stuff that he's throwing at you, the, these could be hurdles for some readers and slow you down. You might not be digging the level of darkness that you just walked into. Now, it could sideline you. It could fuck you up a little bit. It could slow things down because it's just so dark. It's hard for you to continue on, which gives me a perfect segue into the tone because this book is the darkest book of all of Baker's that I've read. In fact, this is probably the darkest book I have ever read. And this does make sense because Baker, like you've probably seen in my reviews, at each one I say that this book is darker. That is kind of in itself a theme of these stories. This is a descent into madness. It's a descent into the darkness of, you know, the human heart. Baker will waste no time showing us the depravity that these characters will go for to reach their goals. I mean, we will see the worst of the worst, guys. I read Blood Meridian bef just right before I read this, and this is darker than Blood Meridian. It, and, you know, that's in just the same fashion as Blood Meridian, though, it's written beautifully. But I'm mentioning this because it's not just about, you know, talking about that dark and dastardly tone. It's this, this is stuff you guys have to chew on and think about when you're getting ready to get into a series like this. Because some people just can't handle watching a character continue their barbaric behavior. Or you can't watch someone be a tyrant and never make the turnaround. Keeping this thing spoiler free, I do also want to give you guys some information so you can chew on these, you know, little bits and make the decision, you know, weigh out all the pros and cons. With this dark and dastardly like tone, you're going to be getting cannibalism, you know, sodomy rape, just betrayal, murder, all of the worst kinds of stuff. And 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 also just lingering in it the there is a, a, you know several parts in this book it's not just that it goes to this place it like i said this is a descent it's like a you're really experiencing it so you're going to be in it more than just you know a quick little glimpse this is going to surround you in a whole lot of darkness and terror and just you know envelop you and then it's <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is the action in the book, because I think it excels massively in this area. I mean, that's kind of an understatement. This thing has a battle for the ages, and it should, right? I mean, this is the 
series end. And the battle at Golgotharoth, guys, is on several next levels. And it is so epic. And it's done in that, you know, Baker has that prose, which really brings that flashy imagery that really just makes this thing that much more epic. And I do know that there are going to be some people that have that hang up with the style in which he kind of throws stuff at you in these battles. Because sometimes you're getting hit with people that seem like they don't matter at all. They're just very background characters. You know, they're just, you know, cannon fodder or whatever. They're just more names that Baker's throwing at you. But guys, this is part of that epic style. This is what's br showing you how broad and massive this thing is. You know, it's bringing in all these different p kinds of people and fighters and warriors. And so, yes, it could seem like it's just exposition being thrown at you, but I just want to argue and say, no, this is how he's building this epic fucking battle. All those people that seem like they might not matter, they do in the sense that they were men here at this fucking final showdown that was goddamn amazing. But this also doesn't mean that characters that you might care about don't get any shine because I feel like there was plenty of spotlight to go around. Now there is going to be some people that will probably argue that some people that we expected to get that spotlight didn't. And I will kind of agree with them to some extent. But one character I definitely want to put, you know, out there is Anasa Rember Sirwa. This is a character that not only gets that like physical prowess shine, I feel like her character also gets like a, an emotional arc as well, bringing her further into that just, you know, very strong female character. One that I will argue till, till the day I die. I can't do it here because we're spoiler free, but if you've read these books, just wait to, for my spoiler video. Okay. The other elements that get really amplified here in the book are the magic and the Inkoroi technique. Because of this massive scale battle, we get massive scale magic. And, and, you know, these Inkoroi objects that are amazing to just kind of reveal to the reader. This stuff hits so hard. And I do believe because it's kind of so sparse. Like, it's just, it's only kind of, like, sprinkled in here. And that makes it that much better. Without, without like, kind of ramming it down our throats, it becomes that much more intriguing and compelling and just cool as all fuck. But then on the, on the other side of that, you know, we have the Gnostic sorceries and, and stuff that is happening that we're very familiar with. But I feel like that doesn't get any old, man. When I see these, you know, geo, geometric, like, Gnostic hymns being sung and they're just destructive in multiple different ways, I just can't get enough of this. And, you know, God bless them because death came swirling down. The next thing I want to get into is the ending. No, I'm not going to spoil anything. But I need to talk about this because I do think that there is a lot of confusion out there. Uh, the You know, when this stuff hit and dropped, there's a lot of people that think it's the absolute end of it all. But then there's also Baker who has said himself that this thing will continue. So it's one of those deals. You hear from so many people like this is the end of it all. Like if anything else does come, it's just some extra stuff. And then you have people straight up saying, no, that it does continue. Now, I've done a little research, and what I see from it, too, is that Baker, yes, himself has said that there will be another sequence to this overall Second Apocalypse series. So you should know going in that the, at the end of Aspect Emperor, it is the end of the Aspect Emperor series, not necessarily the whole Second Apocalypse story. Now, that being said as well, this is as far as Baker has seen the story, right? So this is everything that he has cooked up in his head. So he has also said in a very powerful way, it is the end of the story. Anything from here on out, guys, will be something completely plucked new from the ether. Now, with the information that the second Apocalypse series does move forward with other additional books, that should help soften the blow here at the end of the unholy consult because i'm guaranteeing you that this ending is going to bite it's going to hurt and it might even frustrate some readers now i think that that's ex it's on purpose <laughs> but you guys have to decide if that's something that you want to get into myself personally when i first ended the when i first finished i was kind of mad but I actually went back and read a couple chapters and I realized I also 
missed a couple things. So I also too think it's very important for you guys to take your time and really digest everything that Baker gives you here in this book because if you miss one little bit, you might start bitching about, oh, they, he didn't give me closure here. Well, yeah, he did. You just missed it. Baker has literally taken his series into no man's land as far as fantasy is concerned. There's nobody that's done this before, and I applaud him a lot. Like I said, I was frustrated at first, but then you also... This is stuff that needs time to really, like, you need to sit on it and digest it. Baker's books are almost like psychedelics. Like, you don't just take them and then go into the next thing. No, you need to, like, reflect on everything that just happened. And this one is no different. It's gonna take some time. Guys, it really floored me. I am not the same reader like when I started this whole thing, like at, by the end of this book, Baker has really compromised me, I think, as a fantasy reader. In some ways, it feels like he's unconditioned me to everything I've been conditioned to my whole life within the fantasy genre. He is going to subvert everything, including your expectations. And sometimes this might even feel very nihilistic. But once again, that rolls back into paying attention to all the details because there are small things that keep this thing from being extreme, like completely nihilistic. There are some points to things that happen. It's not all for naught. But there is still going to be a level of darkness that feels like it's all for naught. So you're watching this review probably and you're like, well, Jesus, Mark, you're not really selling this one like the la all those other books. You're really gush reviewing and, and all this happy like energy and now you, you're, you're, sent, you're making me depressed. <laughs> so why would I want to pick these books up? Well, guys, I think that there's just, I think that there's people that are going to want to experience this level of tragedy. There is something beautiful about the darkness. Yes, it's barbaric and just sinister as all fuck, but there is, there's something to it. There's something to this journey. There, And I can relate in some aspects to a lot of these characters in their, their struggles. That's what made it real for me along the way, you know? And this is also one of the, my heart broke more than any other book I've ever read, specifically over one character in this one, I mean, I really felt like my soul changed, and, <clears throat> and it's, it's tough. It's tough, it's tough, you know. Uh, but that's beautiful, right? Like, it's beautiful that he did something that pulls this kind of shit out of me. You know what I mean? That fucking, just thinking about it makes me want to fucking cry. Like, that is, that's why I'm saying, like, you <laughs> give him a fucking shot. Give it a shot, because, yes, it might not be shining, it, it might not be something that, God damn it, it's good. So as you can see, these things have the ability to make you an emotional wreck, and that is beautiful. That is something that I look for, not just in, you know, not just books, like in music, in film. It's the stuff that I like to devour. I like things that touch me right here in that black heart of mine and really make it start to thump. And <clears throat> this journey... It's just something I cherish. And I think that there are going to be other people that cherish it. I know there is because I'm part of, you know, part of the Baker cult now. You know, and that's another beautiful thing about reading these books. If you get into them, you really become part of something else too. Something bigger than yourself. You know, part of this crazy wackadoo fan base that just is so much like, you know, they are, we're all a bunch of skin eaters fucking doing the slog of slogs together. It's a beautiful thing, guys. And Baker is challenging you, and I'm just encouraging you to accept that challenge. It's okay if it gets out of your depth or too dark along the way. You don't have to continue. But I do think you owe it to yourself, especially if you are searching for something different outside of the same stuff that you've been chewing on your whole life. If you're at that place in fantasy reading where you're begging for something new and different, I just, like, once again, I'm going to encourage you to pick these books up and give them a try. I know that I am a very different person after reading them. So as far as my two cents for the slow and the struggling, I do think that the struggling reader needs to get a better sense of reading before jumping into something that is so massive and multi-layered 
and introspective as Baker's writing. So even though this is a much faster paced book, it still has a lot of stuff that will be thrown at you that is not so straightforward. You have to use your brain a whole lot while devouring Baker, but there is a huge payoff with that because it makes it that much more real. But if you are struggling, there's no reason to try to force something. Get a better, you know, get a better foundation. Get some easier stuff finished under your belt. Get a little bit of passion built in you. Get that fire brewing because even when you hit this stuff and you're ready, it still might be challenging. But that fire you stoke will see you through the night. Now, slow readers... Oh, man, you know, if you don't have any struggles, you're just a slow reader that might even not have that much time. You're like, fuck, I got about one series in me in my for my entire life. This could be it. It, it, it. I mean, that's where I'm holding it. This is the best thing I've ever fucking read. Uh, it is tragic and it's painful, but that doesn't mean it, it is. A, it's not amazing to me. I find it more amazing than a lot of other. It's it's top notch. So I do think it could be worth your time. I think it's something that progressively takes you down a path. So don't be expecting to jump back into safer waters once you get into the deep end, okay? But for those that want to swim in the dark and murky shit, it's very, 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 very good. And it could very, very well be for you. All right, guys. As always, thanks for spending some time down here at the channel and to our Scott Baker you can't see it but i'm doing an infinite amount of thumbs up sir two salutes i don't <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know what to say except for thank you thank you for this and i can't wait to see what else you got fuck now for those of you that want a little more out of me from this book just know the spoiler uh the spoiler video is around the corner i've been working on it for days it's gonna be a, a bit elaborate so just know it's right around the corner guys keep an eye out for that and for, if you're new please like and subscribe it really helps me grow the channel you know what time it is Purr.